All right, welcome. So we're going to go over how to calculate the value of a bond. And I'm going to speak fairly quickly. I hope it doesn't bother you, but I'm trying not to waste your time. So we need four inputs for this. We need the use of maturity is going to be 10 years. The frequency tube means that it pays semi-annually. Uh, the coupon rate of the bond is 10%, and our expected rate of return is 8%. So from these four numbers, we derive these four. The number of payments for our entire calculation will be 20 because it's just 10 years and times 2 for semi-annually. The coupon per period and expected return per period is just the same as these two divided by two because it's semi-annual. The interest payment per period is going to be $50 because the coupon per period is 5%. You multiply that by the par value of the bond, which is $1,000. So you see these 20 periods of $50 interest payments right here. At the end, you get a $1,000 principal payment. And so this is what we're going to be valuing. Um, we want the current value of all these future payments, so we find that using this discount factor. So going from the present to the future is quite simple to illustrate with this. So an investment now over one period, our expected rate of return, our expected return is 4%. So we are we expect to earn uh, 1.04 times our current value. Going two periods forward, we would want it to be 1.0816. So we multiply by 1.04 twice, and it would be compounding on what we had earned in the previous period. So it's an exponential growth and these payments um, going from the current to the future, we would multiply by this. The Going from the future to the current to the present, we would divide by this number. So the current value of all these payments is right here. The total is 1135, and the sum of this column, as you can see, 1135. Um, that would equate to a bond price of 113.59 because the price is, has a base of 100, so you just divide that by 10. Excel has a function to calculate the uh, bond's value as well. PV function, the rate is our expected return per period. This is the number of periods, 20. Uh, this is the payment, 50 bucks. And the future value is $1,000, that's the payment at the end. Multiply it by negative one. You could multiply these two by negative one. I choose to just do it at the end. It's the same exact thing. Um, so you can see that we value this bond at a premium. And it, that makes sense because the bond's coupon rate is higher than our expected return. Let's say they were the same and we value it at 100. We value it at par. Let's say it were lower. <clears throat> so we would value it at a discount. Let's say it were at a, it's at a premium again, but now it's only 5 years instead of 10. So it's at 113.6 right now. Let's make it 5. Now it's only 108. The reason we're getting that benefit of the difference for a shorter period of time. So when it's a longer period of time, it's worth more to us because we're making more off of this than we expect. So we would basically buy it at a higher price. Um, this is not the actual market price. This is what we determine our value for the bond would be. The market price could be different. So that pretty much covers all the bases. Um, we had a couple assumptions with this that I want to go over. So we assumed that our expected rate of return was constant over this time horizon of 10 years. In reality, that's generally not going to be the case. We also assumed that we were not in between interest payments, that we were precisely six months until the next interest payment. Um, generally, that's obviously not going to be the case. We're going to be at some point in between. So that's pretty much it. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.